So, starting a video with an apology never gets any easier, but there is no way I can go on like this anymore. I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgement, and I don't expect to be forgiven. See, a while ago I reviewed a kit of Crucial's Ballistics RGB memory, and in that review I titled it The New RGB RAM King, believing that it was about as good as it gets when it comes to RGB on a RAM module. But I was wrong. While the Ballistics RGB had some mad sick lighting strapped to it, when compared to what we'll be reviewing today, I can't in good conscience call it the RGB RAM King anymore. And that's because in this video I'll be reviewing Crucial's Ballistics Max RGB, a more premium, much faster and much more RGBified RAM champion. It might also be a tiny bit of a bad buy for Ryzen systems, but we'll get to that a little later. And while we're on the topic of Ryzen, if you're like most of us and are still waiting for GPU prices to drop before snagging one up, or you just don't need a dedicated graphics card at all for your work, home theater, or small form factor builds, then you definitely need to check out AMD's new Ryzen 5000G processors. The 5000G lineup ships with everything that makes the regular 5000 series chips so phenomenal, including the innovative 7 nanometers and 3 architecture, high core counts, high clock speeds, and a host of fancy new features which you can check out in my review on the 5800 Rex, but with some extra special Radeon graphics sauce to top it all off. The 5000G series chips feature Radeon graphics with up to 8 dedicated graphics cores, with clock frequencies all the way up to 2000 MHz, which makes them perfect for playing pretty much all of the esports games at 1080p, while also providing a good experience in most modern AAA titles, with some tweaked settings here and there. So, if you're sick of waiting and want to jump into the game right now, check it out in the link in the description. And if you're in South Africa and want to get your hands on them as soon as possible, head on over to Take A Lot, also linked down below. Now, with Crucial making, tuning and engineering their own memory from start to finish, when they release a DDR4 kit like the one we're working with here, you know it's going to be something special. Crucial's Ballistics Max lineup comes in RGB and non-RGB versions, ship in 8 or 16GB per module configurations, and sports some of the fastest frequencies in the game, when it comes to DDR4 memory anyway, ranging from 4000MHz all the way up to 5100MHz. The two kits we're checking out today are of the RGB variety, which makes me very happy, and both include two 8GB modules with rated frequencies of 4400MHz and CL19 timings. So basically we've got 32 gigs of pure memory speed right here. Speed that you wouldn't really expect coming from such a sleek and discreet package. Unlike a lot of other more ostentatious and gaudy high speed memory kits, some of which I'm not gonna lie still look amazing, the Ballistics Max keeps things much more simple in the looks department. They come in any color as long as it's black, don't feature any distracting bells and whistles, and the branding on both sides is done super tastefully. The shrouds on these things are probably some of the most low-key ones you can find in a sea of edgy, gamery and toy knife looking RAM kits. Instead of looking like they just came out of a Transformers rave party, these things are the essence of subtlety. The matte black finish adds a whole lot of class to the entire affair, while Crucial's attention to detail in the angular design on both sides of the module ensures that it doesn't end up looking too boring. They also feel as premium and sturdy as they look. The brushed black metal feels fantastic and there's a lot of it which makes each module feel like they were once part of a SpaceX rocket and the overall build quality is just superb. All of that aluminium also helps in the cooling department with the max only hitting a max temp of 46 degrees during my testing. All in all, I do tend to prefer a teensy bit more flair when it comes to the parts in my gaming rigs, landing somewhere between this and a hunk of gold with diamond encrusted spikes everywhere but I can still fully appreciate the tactical restraint Crucial decided to go with here. I have no doubt that these things would look great in pretty much any color theme build or serious overclockers open air test bench. But all that mostly counts for the non-RGB versions of the Ballistics Max. Because when the lights on the Max RGB turn on, you'd better get ready for an RGB explosion dreams are made of. RGB LEDs run along the entire top of the module, making for a spectacular light show as soon as your system boots, and it's just gorgeous. Each LED goes much brighter than I expected, probably brighter than all of the other RAM kits I've ever worked with, and the whole thing is almost seamless. Almost because, like Peter Parker's uncle once said, with great brightness comes great diffusion. Or something like that. What I'm trying to say is that the LEDs in this thing go so bright that they create minor hotspots that are, well, relatively easy to spot even through the high quality diffusion layer on top, which does a fairly good job of keeping the lights mostly in check. As for that diffusion layer itself, it's big. 
so big that there are almost no gaps in lighting between each module when you're running four side by side, which looks really dope. And they have a minimalist design with the Ballistics Max text in the center with moves on both sides. It's nothing too special other than the size, and I think something a little more exciting would have been cool to see here. Which is probably why Crucial entered full-on gamer mode by making the diffusion layer super easy to remove and providing the files for users to like 3D print their own. That opens up the door to almost limitless customization. Like even the official files supplied by Crucial on their website look amazing. The lighting itself is also super customizable with the Ballistics mod utility offering a bunch of options, including 12 preset patterns, brightness and speed adjustments, and you can apply all of that to all modules or each individually, which I think is pretty cool. And if you're already using a third-party lighting software like Mystic Light, then you can get even more creative with the light show. Now, even though Crucial has clearly paid a lot of attention to detail when it comes to the aesthetic design of these modules, their primary focus was almost definitely raw performance. So I think it's about time we get into some benchmarks. Going up against the 32 gigabyte kit of Ballistics Max will be Crucial's own 32 gigabyte kit of Ballistics RGB and a 16 gigabyte kit of the more budget-friendly Ballistics Tactical Tracer. All the kits were run on my Ryzen 5800X system, which includes MSI's X570A motherboard, Antec's 750W EAG Pro, Crucial's P5 Plus as our game drive, and MSI's RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio doing its best to eliminate as much of the GPU bottleneck as possible. All of the kits we're testing were run at stock clock speeds and latencies for this first round. Now, first up are two synthetic productivity benchmarks in the form of Blender Benchmark and Cinebench R23. And if you were betting on a blowout in favor of the Ballistics Max, then you just lost that bet. Surprisingly, the Ballistics RGB comes out as the big winner here, and in the case of Cinebench's multi-threaded score, by a pretty significant margin. Weird. Well, maybe we'll see things improve for the Max when it comes to gaming. Or maybe not. Definitely not, actually. Out of all the games I tested, the Max only came out on top in two of them, including Warzone and Civilization VI, while the regular Ballistics RGB got the highest average FPS in eight games, though obviously it was a pretty close race in most cases. And the Tactical Tracer also surprisingly managed to grab a win too. If you're confused by this less than stellar performance, you're not alone. I've always known that a RAM kit's latency can often play a bigger role in gaming performance than pure speed alone, but this is probably the first time I've seen it in action like this. So I went back to the drawing board. I bumped the Max's frequency up to 4600 MHz, up the voltage to 1.6, tightened timings to CL16, though with slower secondary and tertiary timings than like on the other kits for the sake of stability, and I ran it all again. And you know what? That definitely helped. With this configuration, the Ballistics Max walked away with a very comfortable win, taking the lead in 7 of the 9 games tested in this gauntlet. But man, it's so close that I almost want to chalk it up to margin of error in most of these cases. So what's actually happening here? Why does a kit of memory that's faster by more than 1000 MHz need to be overclocked and have its timings tightened for it to stand any real chance against the regular Ballistics RGB? Well, I think it comes down to a couple of things. First off, latency. Even though I was able to get the Ballistics Max down to CL16, it wasn't really true CL16 as lowering the secondary and tertiary timings anywhere near as low as on the regular RGB version was impossible for my system. Super high speeds and slow timings just aren't great for gaming if you don't know what you're doing. Next, and I think the most important part of this puzzle, is that we're using a Ryzen system here. And there's a reason the phrase one to one is used a lot when talking about Ryzen and memory. See, for a Ryzen chip and a memory kit to work together as best as they possibly can, it's recommended to run everything in a one to one to one configuration. That's what most motherboards usually default to when you turn on XMP. That means that the memory frequency, Ryzen's Infinity Fabric Clock or F Clock, and your memory controller or U Clock frequencies need to be in sync for ultimate performance. So, ideally, the Ballistics Max would run at 4400 MHz with an F clock and U clock set to 2200 MHz. But unfortunately, 2200 is basically unattainable right now on probably all Ryzen systems as far as I know. And because of that, even with an XNP profile applied, the kit defaults to 4400 MHz with an F clock of 1800 and a U clock of 1100 MHz. And even though an F clock of 1800 is actually pretty impressive, it's all out of sync. And that's why I think we're seeing lower performance numbers than the kit is actually capable of. 
The only other likely scenario here that I can think of is that there's a lot more fine tuning that needs to be done for fast memory to play well with Ryzen. And that's the thing. I'm betting a lot of you watching this don't plan on overclocking your memory at all, except for hopefully enabling XMP. So if you're using a Ryzen system, then I don't see any reason to splurge on a lightning fast kit like the Ballistics Max, unless you're an experienced overclocker with ready access to liquid nitrogen. For regular people like myself, a kit of Crucial's Ballistics RGB, which I reviewed not too long ago, is hands down the better option. A 16 gigabyte, 3600 MHz CL16 kit will only set you back around $74 right now. While the 16 gigabyte, 4400 CL16 version of the Ballistics Max is selling for $97. Crucial's Ballistics Max is a high speed, gorgeous, and very premium kit of RAM. And if you're using a system from Team Blue, which doesn't mind out of sync frequencies all that much, just want some bragging rights, know how to fine tune memory for Ryzen, or want to try to set some overclocking records, then the Ballistics Max is still a fantastic option. For the rest of us with Ryzen systems though, kits with frequencies under 4000 MHz and fast timings still seem to be the sweet spot. Just like the sweet spot I have for AMD's new Ryzen 5000 G series chips and their built-in Radeon graphics. I can't wait to get my hands on one for a small form factor HTPC I want to put together sometime soon. Gonna be awesome. Be sure to check out the 5000G series lineup using the link in the description. And if you're in South Africa, check them out on Take A Lot, also linked down below. Thanks to Crucial for letting me play around with Blue 6 Max. And thanks and very happy holidays to everyone who made it this far into the video. Your watch time is the best present I could have hoped for. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.